If you're looking for success in 2024 in real estate as a service provider, maybe you're in mortgage or maybe you're just a professional overall, this might be one of the most important videos you watch because I want to share with you three quick tips for I think the mindset we need to scale our income, really survive a real estate recession and ultimately survive and thrive in 2024 when it comes to uh, real estate. And then we're also going to be doing some coaching with two special guests today. So if you look at the time codes of this video, you'll be able to skip around to learn um, really some tactics for how do I use YouTube to market my business. And here's some of, some of the benefits that we're ultimately kind of after. You know, by tapping into YouTube, you can increase leads and sales, you can create extra income streams, you can build a recession proof personal brand, you can increase transactions to get new clients, you can rise to the top 2% of any market, you can learn how to get free leads and not have to cold call. There's passive prospecting opportunities because you make a YouTube video once and it keeps getting viewed for weeks, months and years to come. You could build your brand by building up your online presence, building up an online brand. It ultimately allows you to work less, but ultimately make more money and attract high net worth clients. What, what is one transaction worth to you? What would it be worth to attract a high net worth client and ultimately build a system so unlimited business is coming your way? Maybe enough to get through how slow transactions are right now, but then ultimately to thrive as the market shifts, as rates change, who knows what the future holds, um, so that you can do more of what you love, scaling your business, scaling up, and spending time with your family, going on better vacations, and all that kind of stuff. So three quick tips, and then we're going to dive into our first guest. This is the Coffee with Cannell show. If you're new here, smash like. And today's episode is actually brought to you by realtubeclass.com. I just finished up an hour-long training where I got really tactical, totally free. The limited replay is available. You can check that out in the description, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. But I just wrote down three really important things that anybody can benefit. I know that a lot of our community is not doing real estate. A lot of our community here is doing um, YouTube, DIY, all kinds of different niches, niches, you know, whatever. And so uh, what I would say is here, number one is learn new skills. So Harvard Business Review uh, did a study of 3,500 managers. And what they discovered was two shocking statistics. The first one was only three out of 10 new hires at a business have the necessary skills to even do their job right now at a satisfactory or above satisfactory level. What does that mean? Well, if you work somewhere and you're coming on, or if you're coming into the creator economy, or if you're a newer agent or even a seasoned agent, there's probably still some skills you need to learn, right? There's a skill gap. Only three out of 10 people have enough skills adequate for these different professional disciplines. Question for you, do you have the adequate skills to not succeed in real estate when the market is frothy and the money printers are on and just everything's being lifted up and really you were just conducting transactions, managing transactions as opposed to being a real estate professional, right? So it's this idea of learning new skills, but the second stat is really shocking. What they revealed was that if you want to stay relevant, stay effective, and prepare for the future, that professionals need to learn 10 new skills every 18 months. Harvard Business Review, you can look up the article. 3,500 managers surveyed, only three out of 10 are ready now. And in the next 18 months, if you don't learn 10 skills, then you're gonna start falling behind. What does that mean? AI, CRMs, online marketing, YouTube, social media, also things we can, I mean, in, in real estate, you would think about the like specific skills, like for some, it's like, oh, in real estate, I just, you know, manage the deal. No, it's like, or I just have to get leads and get them going. No, managing the whole transaction, being able to, oh, shoot, we have a financing issue. Can we fix that? And you're the professional. So you know all those different things. So number one, if we're going to thrive in 2024, we got to commit to learning new skills. 100% of us, real estate or not, right? We have to be like, okay, what are the necessary skills for the next level? Am I embracing AI? What's the latest technology? What other software could help me go faster? And then of course, in YouTube, definitely subscribe because we're here to help you learn skills with YouTube thumbnails, titles, what to say in videos. And in just a second, we'll get into some of that content. But number two, to win in 2024, you need to fall in love with Sam. 
Did you see that one coming? It's true. You need to fall in love with Sam. Sean, I'm already married. That's okay. If you are in business, if you're a professional, you need to date Sam as well. Sean, that's really weird. What are you talking about? Sam stands for sales and marketing. One of the things that's actually interesting is we want to just be good with people, how to win friends and influence people. We want to just, you know, shake hands. We want to just, can, can I just avoid sales and marketing? No, no, you can't actually. And one of the things, a mindset shifts I've learned is that whatever your role is, you might be the primary agent, you might be a loan officer, whatever. And, and you might be mid company, so this might not be the hat you're wearing. But the mindset we all need to adapt is that we are actually like our own chief marketing officer. That it is my responsibility to not just do the thing, but to be the main proponent of marketing the thing. Because content is king, but marketing is queen and she runs the household. So it's like, okay, or, or, or doing the service is king, but marketing you doing the service is queen and she runs the household. Like mastering marketing and mastering sales. I'm going to help you get leads with um, YouTube for your real estate business, especially at our class, RealTube class. We go into that, realtubeclass.com. We're going to talk about it in some of our coaching in just a second. And again, free class in the description. But but that's only one piece of the pie too, right? That's the marketing piece. But when you when they call you or when they text you, are you following up quick? There's that other MIT study that after five minutes, it is 20 times harder for that lead to respond. If you don't follow up with the lead that comes in, I looked it up, you know, back when I've shopped in different markets and we do some real estate investing, my wife and I, and like we use Zillow a little bit and, and you know, and now I avoid it, but I type my information in once, you know, to see like you start getting phone calls from Zillow and they try to place you with somebody or whatever. But I just remember too, and in, in, I was in Las Vegas, we were looking for a house and I type my information to Google or to Zillow. And then the Zillow lady was like, the automated robot was like, all right, we're going to place you. And then like the phone started ringing and like the person didn't lift, uh, pick up. You know that Zillow leads can be anywhere from 30 to 50 to $150. Sometimes it's like $500 a month to get leads from Zillow. Um, it could be as much as like a thousand a month. And maybe you're paying per individual lead. But I was looking in like Grand Rapids, Michigan. It was like a thousand dollars a month to Google uh, Zillow. Forgive me. What's the point? Like even just getting the lead, you got to follow up with the lead. 2024, we got to master sales and marketing. We got to be saying, uh, in fact, uh, you don't want to just date Sam. You need to marry Sam. Like it's an ongoing. You should wake up with Sam every day and get to work because it's like, I got to do the thing. I got to fulfill my product. I got to be world-class. I want to be excellent. I want to make great videos, but I need to master sales and marketing. And number three, if in 2024, not just in real estate, but for our whole Coffee with Cano community and Think Media community, we need to stay positive. I think that one of the biggest challenges we're all facing right now is between our two ears, is this battlefield for the mind. As we go into 2024, some have called it the year of chaos. Chaos in the economy, chaos in geopolitics, chaos in culture wars and division, chaos in the real estate market, chaos in interest rates, chaos in no inventory, chaos in transactions in Snohomish County, where I am right now, transactions right now, my friend Anton was telling me are as slow and as low as 2011. It's a different market. Now you're all in unique markets, but it's a different market, right? How, how, how many rate drops are going to happen next year. What's what's going to happen? And then what are also the opportunities though? What's the opportunities with the new, you know, for, oh, you only have to put 5% down on a fourplex and, and um, or four units, right? Four doors. Um, and so you can start house hacking and these different things. Number three, stay positive. This isn't Pollyanna. Staying positive is not being delusional. But I think that in 2024, if we're going to thrive on YouTube, if we're going to thrive in business, if we're going to make it through whatever comes our way, we need mental toughness. We face the brutal facts with unwavering optimism. So I encourage you. I hope that was valuable. And we always do sometimes like a little opening, a uh, little bit of value here on Coffee with Cannell. 2024, you want to crush it. Number one, commit to learning new skills. Number two, fall in love with Sam.
who's Sam? Sales and marketing. And number three, stay positive. Hey, shout out where are you watching from? What are you sipping on? What are you drinking today? I got a little bit of, uh, you know, coffee as it is the Coffee with Candle show. So let's get into it. Welcome back to the Coffee with Cannell show. We have two special guests today, but let me know how are you doing? We're going to go to Sarah in just a second and then Justin, but shout me out. Where are you watching from in the world? Share this, especially with somebody that's maybe in real estate. Different niche title than we usually do. Hyper niche. You know, we're usually much broader than this, but I got a special place in my heart for real estate. One, I personally love it. Two, I have an odd number of friends and peers speak at a lot of different real estate events, speak for my friend, Neil Dingra at a mortgage event, really mostly loan officers, um, have done many presentations and different whatever. So really, uh, our theme today is real estate. And also today's coffee with Candle is brought to you by real class.com. But without further ado, we're going to get ready for Sarah here, Justin sipping on coffee. We got California finishing my coffee. A latte with espresso shots. That sounds really good. Okay. Good to see y'all. Good to see you, Angelique. Good to see we got Drea here. Zussi, thanks so much for being here. All right, Sarah, tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Thanks so much for jumping on and uh, let's uh, tackle some of your questions today. First, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Sarah Driscoll. I have been selling real estate for 40 years. I'm in San Diego, California, and my channel is about uh, providing some hopefully interesting information for home sellers. Amazing. So when did you start your channel? Uh, a few months ago. Excellent. Excellent. 18 videos. Um, before we get into your questions, what was the hardest thing right at the start for posting your first videos? What was going through your mindset? What was, was there any resistance? Did you, do you wish you started your YouTube channel sooner? And was there anything that caused you to hesitate or did you just finally get around to it? Well, in my industry, my colleagues are all talking about video, video, video. And what they mean by that is they do a video and post it on social media. So it goes on Facebook or Instagram, something like that. And then it's, you know, I mean, then people forget. So we decided, my, I work with my husband, um, but we decided that we would start doing that. And before we could get started with actually doing the videos, we realized what we really meant was start a YouTube channel and create content, a library of content that would live for a while. So that became the the rabbit hole of learning and we found vra fortunately and so we spent a lot of time learning i, I guess the biggest um obstacle to getting started was we figured out we had to learn some things first and then we finally jumped in and did it yes yeah definitely uh, skills to learn and i'm pulling up one of your videos here awesome all right well um hit me with your first question i am not good at mar at rocketing i need to figure out how to get the videos in front of the right audience, which is San Diego home sellers. Awesome. Okay. Well, let's dive in here to some niche specific thing. Okay. Um, first thing I would do is, you know, in, in a VRA, we talk about the seven R's reverse engineer and research, which speaks to topics being one of the biggest opportunities. And so if I'm you and I'm in San, San Diego, the first thing on a simple level and inside of ERA, we have many different keyword research tools, but the YouTube search bar and the auto predict feature of it could probably give us a lot of information when we just type in San Diego real estate. And here's one of the things that I want to want you to see, but everybody watching to see as well. When I look at your channel and I see the titles that you've done and the fact you're telling me that you want influence in San Diego, I actually only see the word San Diego in one title. This isn't going to be helpful because San Diego, uh, Sarah Driscoll, San Diego Realtor is, is it more of a trailer, right? So that wasn't, I mean, it's not as much of an outreach video, but when I type in, tap in San Diego real estate, you know, this very sometimes hidden in plain sight information is saying in order, some of the topics or the topics that people are on the internet wanting the most. So this is why I would always encourage doing market updates. And also market updates is not a once a year thing. It could be, I think, minimum once a month. It could be maximum once a week. How much business or awareness do you want? And that 
these probably these are not vi viral videos, but these are a big opportunity to um, start to get in front of people. So what do we see though in order here? We see first of all maybe just information about the market in general or a market update. What we also realize we talk about this all the time in VRA, and that is that we're about to be in January as the year as the clock turns over. <laughs> Um, there's a whole new, all old, it's not that all old videos become irrelevant, but humans want recency that we want the newest information. As soon as it's 2024, I don't really want 2023 information. So the agents that hustle in the next eight weeks and really think about strategic 2024 content are going to be most powerfully positioned. Now, I think that, uh, tours are that's a debate we could have uh, another time or you know or now but like i think it's totally fine because individual listings you know are interesting because maybe um not only might you sell the listing but it could attract people the problem is they're not as broad appeal right that's that's where i say so do you have to do listings you don't i think you can do listings but again all we're doing is this first page we just typed in san diego real estate a crash of course it, it is San Diego real estate going to crash? Well, here's what NAR says. Here's what, you know, you go on. Okay. Forecast. Have you made a predictions video for the next year? And so this was off, you know, just our first basic step, but sometimes, and, and I don't, I don't blame you. It's sometimes it's uh, you know, it's, it's a challenge. A lot of us have, uh, we, I love the Michael Jordan quote. It's like master the fundamentals and everything else you do will rise. So inside of ERA and inside of ERA Masters, we could get into much more advanced tactics. But the basic thing I look at on your channel, you're a very professional communicator, your ability to produce videos, and you've put out videos. But these videos aren't like the first five videos I would even do, like the most basic foundational to just start getting some hand-to-hand -hand awareness of you in San Diego in particular, where there could be deal flow. And you are more aware than anybody that if if we just get one transaction, that would be great. If we could get three in the next 45 days, that would be amazing in addition to whatever else. So um, you don't need a ton of views. I want to get in front of these types of uh, topics. How, how, what do you think about this feedback? I think it's great. Do I need to incorporate San Diego or I guess into titles or how do I bring that in? Oh, absolutely. Because... YouTube is still the second largest search engine in the world. It's also the actual primary search engine of certain consumers. So I would want angles like moving to San Diego, pros and cons, moving to San Diego. I then see the opportunity of you identifying, like if we were to draw dartboard and if the term San Diego was a bullseye is North County, South County. Is there any other cities, beach cities is Coronado Island Are any of these things still on that mark board? If they, they, LA probably is not. So that's probably too far, but what topics are on there? And then I would methodically specifically city names or location names or County names or region names. I would want to over time, hit all of those that is capable for me to serve because the the niche thing could be somebody that knows they're moving and wants to buy a house and knows they're moving. Give me one kind of like more specific city or something within San Diego or region or county. Del Mar. I, sorry, what would it be? Del Mar. Yeah, so Del Mar. So then you saying like, pros and cons of Del Mar, or maybe it's the ang angle of education and, you know, schools and crime rates, the family searching for that, the father who's like shopping in Del Mar and looking for information, searching on either Google or YouTube can then find that video and be like, oh, wow, man, Sarah's cool. Like, oh, that was really great information. I could see she cares about families. Boom, reaches out. Hey, we're ready to buy. Like we're pre-approved. And Del Mar was the angle that someone searched to find you. And what we teach at VRA is 
like ranking in a 2024 world is also that suggested world, which could be like, let's go viral. Usually on YouTube, it's like housing crash type of, like that's sometimes trend surfing. But I would want to put out as many, the analogy is also, it's kind of like fishing. And I'm, you may have heard me say this, it'd be all right. I remember going on a, a date with my mom to, I think, Whibby Island or the San Juan Islands. So we went to Muckle Teo in the Pacific Northwest to get on a ferry. The ferry wasn't there yet. So we got some lattes and walked down on the dock. And we saw a guy there who was in a beach chair and he had like eight fishing poles up against the railing of, um, you know, the dock there. And as I was thinking in my mind, I was like, this is smart. Maybe it's illegal. I don't know if the game warden would approve this, but you know, somebody else that's into fishing would know. Uh, but this is smart because rather than just having the one hook in the ocean, he's got eight and he can sit back. And then one of those could ultimately be the one that catches even just a fish. So the difference between him going home with nothing or him going home with one or two fish could be the amount of at bats or the amount of videos he actually put out into the ocean. So a lot of the different videos and, and you're already getting 73 views, 236. Like these are good amounts of views if you're getting right in front of the right people. So. That's definitely where I would start is is um, little by little creating just quality, helpful, valuable content around these different entry points uh, related to San Diego, Del Mar and other things like that. I appreciate that. I a lot of realtors are looking for buyers and I actually am looking more for sellers. I'm not that interested in finding total strangers to work with uh, to buy a home. Well, and we say the creator who understands the viewer best wins or the business owner who understands their avatar or the person they're most powerfully positioned to help. Or if you just understand that that is the better strategy or this, like you said, they're, you're looking for somebody, I think content around, um, eight tips for getting your home ready to sell, how to get, position your home to make more money, how to, and, the opportunity for real estate, though, is again, there's there's the macro opportunity, which I would argue is nationwide for someone living in the US. General information that could lead to bigger amounts of views. And the really cool thing about YouTube is you can have extra income streams. Eventually, you might be monetized and that's in its own income stream. It probably won't be a lot unless you get really big. But for some, for Think Media, it's $40,000 a month. It's pretty ridiculous. So it could be definitely there's all kinds of other ways to earn in income saying that if you start niching down like specific tips for earning more in San Diego. So you start crafting a title like, you know, 10 things to know to sell your home for maximum uh, for the maximum price in San Diego. That title was not refined, but that would be the essence of it, like something like that. And again, the greater clarity for everybody at Coffee with Kendall watching, the greater clarity you have on like the exact person you want to help or the exact pain point or the desire, the greater idea, uh, clarity you have on who your ideal client is, then that influences the content you make to attract your ideal client. So you saying that, it, you know, I hope that maybe helps too, is that um, that would steer your strategy with the goal of attracting viewers that you're most powerfully positioned to help. Thank you. Has this been a good conversation, Sarah? You getting some value and some ideas going? Absolutely. I have some work to do. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you. Thanks so much for jumping on. Oh, appreciate you, Sarah. Kind of cut her off there. But listen, uh, what was your aha moment from that last uh, part? Listen, you if you're here and you see the title and you're like, I'm not in real estate, well, then, yeah, you don't need to stick around. But actually, if you're noticing um, some of the strategy we're doing here uh, definitely applies for business owners, service providers of all kinds. That's kind of a different angle with a different objective. We're actually not trying to go viral. We're just trying to attract the uh, best type of clientele. Um, we're just trying to get one or two or three views. Hopefully those are people that end up calling us or jumping on our email list or emailing us or text messaging us so we can follow up and serve them. And, I like to think of real estate as high ticket affiliate marketing. So, you know, like I get 4% of a camera. And so if a camera maximum is, is a thousand dollars, or let's say it's a thousand dollars, then I make $40. Pretty cool. Um, 
but if it's really hard to, you know, get enough clicks to get enough Amazon clicks to sell that. Now it's the, imagine this, like you're an affiliate for lipstick and it's $10 and you make 4%. What'd you make? 40 cents. Okay. Well then think about real estate. How much is a home in San Diego? A million dollars, 3% commission. That's $30,000. So real estate is kind of like high ticket affiliate marketing, different, but, but we don't need viral amounts of views. We just want to get the right views, a few views. We want to be really clear how we can, you know, collect uh, their information so we can follow up and serve individuals. Um, we're going to go to Justin here in a second. But after that, if you've got questions, put four question marks before and after your question. Um, and we'll jump to that. And then today's episode is brought to you by realtubeclass.com. For the first time ever, I felt like I had so much real estate energy pent up. And uh, someone asked me, we were running like ads on Instagram. They said, are you an agent? I was like, no, I'm not. I said, uh, but I am an investor, have bought and sold different properties, have done some long-term rental stuff, have done some short-term rental stuff, Airbnbs. And uh, I'm obsessed with YouTube. And Generally, I'd say real estate is kind of like a big side hobby for me. And then we have a litany of students we've helped start and grow their YouTube channels in the real estate space. Friends with people like Ryan Pineda, real estate legend, Pace Morby, uh, Michael Zuber, Daily Financial News, Anton Stetner, who's kind of a mogul up in the Snohomish area. So, so while I can't qualify to be a real estate professional, according to the IRS, because of my amount of hours I put into Think Media, and why I would never actually claim to be a real estate professional. I got a few, I got a little bit of like, some stuff under my belt. I think I can talk shop and uh, I definitely can help you get results on YouTube because my specialty would be helping you rank videos, turn those views into leads and even helping you, uh, you know, follow up on your leads more powerfully because there's a lot of, there's a lot of substance under the surface of think media in terms of uh, sales, things like that. What's the point? Realtubeclass.com will not be a waste of your time. One hour free on demand right now because the replay is coming down Friday, which is in 36 hours or something. And so uh, we're going to jump into Justin here and then I will jump. I see some questions coming in. So Justin, welcome to Coffee with Cannell. Sean Cannell, I'm honored to be here. My guy, uh, good to see you. Remind everybody what you're up to, what you're doing. Yeah, so I mean, we first met on Clubhouse. I peak Clubhouse, you poured into me. Um, I run two channels. I have the Prime Real Estate Brokerage channel, which we're talking about today. Um, I am, I guess, if you took Brian Serhan and Peter McKinnon and they had a baby, I guess that would be me. I use storytelling to sell properties. I run a team out of Southwestern Ontario, Canada. Um, and we do a whole bunch of different types of videos and just looking for a little bit more clarity um, on how to run the channel. Beautiful. This looks crispy. Where's this uh, studio? That's my office. Yeah, that's my main office slash studio. Just what a flex. Justin's out. Oh, oh, bro, that's just my office. Just I'm just surrounded Stop. by windows. <laughs> um, I've got a, a ray gun next to me. So if anybody messes with me, uh, that what is that? A light? It's a ray gun. It, it's a light, actually. So the Graham Stefan effect, he had that same light in one of his videos. It was from Restoration Hardware. We bought it like 10 years ago, but that little piece has actually helped us quite a bit in her videos. That's so rad. It reminds me of um, Mars uh, Invasions or whatever, Mars Invasion, whatever movie that was. That was a crazy movie. Okay, that's a side quest. Um, and side note, just for some tips for viewers, a video structured like this, really, really good um, trend surfing. Don't buy real estate until you watch this video. Then doing time codes and chapters, very smart very uh, helpful for uh, viewers. Um, 10 predictions. Okay. I do think if we were to just kind of niche down, I'm getting very granular right up at the start. Mm -hmm. I do wonder if like 2024 in the title, I think that would be helpful. Cool. Uh, titles still carry a lot of weight. Tags don't. Uh, description doesn't carry much. Titles carry a lot. I think actually in search and also in Google and, and there's going to be, of course, a lot of people doing this right now though. So you got a lot of competition, but 2024 real estate, real estate predictions that doesn't come up. Okay. 
Oh yeah, because no one's done doing it yet. So real estate predictions. 2024. I mean, it's the first thing. Canada. So it's interesting. You get more niche. It's, uh, where are you based? We're based in London, Ontario, and surrounding region. So in Canada, just north of Michigan. So, and that's also maybe the ambition here is fine, but the ambition here to just, it's like this, what is this worldwide, you know, like global as a nation. Like, I think that's very fascinating to me. Um, and here's what we just discovered together live on Coffee with Cannell. I'm get. I think this is okay. There's one right here three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. There is, and not that great, and not great content compared to yours. You have the opportunity at this. You have the opportunity to actually change your title and thumbnail. This because it looks like the video is a fire. Up to you because it's it's not popping off yet. And so, um, but again, what we're seeing is there's not even a good answer to that query specifically based on Canada. And so a huge mindset that I'd want you to have and everybody else watching this is that sometimes I think I, I'm all for like, let's just go try to take down Goliath. But I think that actually as we're building up our channels, I'd much rather slay some lions, tigers and bears first to get prepared for Goliath and kind of build up the channel authority. And that would be looking for those niche deals. So being in Canada, I would much, and may, and I think you could still change the title, but it, this is also why reverse engineer and research is so important because if we know what direction we're going for, then it influences everything. Hey, are you looking for a house in Canada? Are you worried about the market? What about this and that? And, and it refines our information. This is a huge, I was thinking about this even in blogging. They talk about, this is kind of what niching means, not just in your brand, but in content. That sometimes too, it's very hard to create. Like it's hard to create content for the global real estate market. In fact, maybe almost impossible because it's so different. So you have, and then and it's even hard to create content for nationwide America because doomers and all these different people, they'll say certain things, but they, they, may, they may only point to one market to prove that where there's another market that disproves that. So in anything, if rather, if I try to talk about advice for every camera, well, it starts getting really blurry, but if I niche down to one camera, all of a sudden it becomes clear. It's like, these are the five things you need to know about this camera. So anyways, it's a long way of saying, I do think there's something interesting about focusing on Canada. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think it makes a ton of sense. The inspiration for the video is Sirhan, who's a friend of mine and, and my mentor. And, you know, he's really talking about the States. I'm talking about Canada. So being more specific makes sense. I guess that leads to the second question that I had in terms of my overall channel, because we do referrals all over North America. Like we send stuff down to Texas. I got partners in Tennessee, Florida. We sent stuff to like the UK and Israel last year. How do you capture the leads? So it was literally just by doing the videos and telling them, Hey, if you want to work with us, just send us an email. They come to our email. And then we would distribute them to our network because we're plugged into three like big. And how do you network. track commissions? Like, what do you end up with? Like 1% on that or half or something? 25%. So if they get two or 3% of the. Oh, commission, you get 25% of their, their, got it. Exactly. So it, it goes directly into my CRM. We capture it actually with a Google form. It goes to my VA. She actually puts it into our deals board. So we can see all of our referrals throughout the year and exactly where they're at. So it's a pipeline of business for us. And I guess that's why I, I try to do general real estate content but as you're speaking i do think because our channel is still in its growth stage speaking to canada first and then indicating that we can do referrals worldwide in the content might be the play um as we're growing because if i'm trying to speak to everybody i'm kind of speaking to nobody right yeah well the other play is it's not either or it's it's a both game meaning if I sit down in preparation and I'm you with the knowledge and experience and brand you have, I sit down and I say, okay, it would be good to do a broader appeal North America video. So that's like thing one. But now that I think about it, it would also be good to do a niche predictions for Canada. Okay, that's video two. Okay, and then now that I think about it, maybe I should hit the US because even though, okay, so I'm actually gonna make three videos. So I'm not gonna release them all in the same, all right, I'm gonna release those 10 days apart. Here's how they, this one might be titled. And then here's, here's my 10 predictions. Six of these actually literally overlap every market, but now I just am using the same information, but I'm positioning and packaging it different. Well, these four are different. So, okay, I got to fix this. So I got to fix that. And now it took a little bit longer, quite a bit of time. Like, so I might, I might sit down if I'm preparing really crafted video podcasts, 
which we do two a week at Think Media. Many are interviews, but if I'm crafting, you know, solo rounds, it might take hours. But I'm I've got podcasts through the end of January now. So every minute spent planning has like a hundred x return on energy and roi if it takes a little bit longer because now you've got three bangers perfectly kind of positioned each one's a little bit more articulate because it's so specifically striking the mark of the title and then it also increases your odds the ultimate effort because you just sit there the whole time you know you'd like deliver basically video one two three do you have an editor helping you i do yeah i got a great creative director yeah so it's like you're able to sit here a little bit longer how long does it take you to record 20, 20 minutes, minutes edited down to 10 yeah 20 yeah 20 so then minutes. it's just an hour it takes an hour kind of goes into your workflow and what happened because there's sometimes some things about youtube i've learned is also kind of like a law of averages meaning we were just doing a, a coaching uh kind of thing on zoom with our vra elite group and what did i uh i was like okay 2024 game plan. Let's do some goal setting. Okay, great. How many videos you want to do a week? Well, you can do more than somebody else because you got team systems and other things. But I'm like, you should definitely, I think a baseline is a long form, meaning not a YouTube short, high effort video per week. And high effort could be self-defined, but just means like, not like in your car and you won it and like, but like you, you thought about like you, and you went through the seven R's, like yeah. you really researched and reverse engineered and title and thumbnail. Okay. So one a week. And then I was like, if our goal would be 25% of those rank, if you're brand new one out of 10, I mean, it one out of 10, if one out of 10 ranks by definition, VFM viral for me, um, and I'm just getting started and in real estate. Again, if, wh whether somebody invests in our program, I'm always fighting to get them an ROI. Shoot, they only need one transaction and they could yeah. 2X, 5X, 10X their investment. Great. Punchline is by doing the three videos, one might only have 52 views and maybe never pops off. The second one, oh, gets a couple thousand, you're pumped. But then the third one gets 150,000. And you didn't realize that was actually gonna be like the North America one. You thought Canada, because, you know, and so does that make sense? It's kind of leveraging the same energy probably kind of in your workflow, but it'll allow you to, I think, capture some market share um, by with the information you really already have. That's probably pretty top of mind from your research and all the work you're doing. Uh, honestly, you knocked it out of the park because the biggest thing I was struggling with my channel was I almost wanted to launch five channels because we do residential, commercial, investing, we do global referrals, we do Canada. And I'm like, oh my God, like it's overwhelming mm -hmm. when in reality, the way you're explaining it is just being focused on how I prep for my shoots. And I can talk about three different asset classes and shoot three different videos if I'm prepared. I just, I'm almost falling forward doing so much. I think I need to spend twice as much time prepping and then mm -hmm. I'll probably get a lot more out of the actual shoots, right? I, I would love the way you kind of articulated that back to me because that would be something I have to vehemently protect myself. I need to spend twice as much prep time prepping. I'm so busy, three-year-old, one-year-old. We hired 13 people in 2023 at Think Media, um, trying to figure, you know, life's crazy, uh, trying to stay healthy, just turned 40. What is that? What do I mean? I'm so busy. I have to spend twice as much time in planning. Yeah. It's I, like I have less time, but I need to spend more time because the more time in planning calendar, flip this, change that, optimize that trip, that'll be inefficient. Okay. That shoot day. Can we just maximize that shoot day more? The more foresight, the more planning It's more painful in the moment with all the fires burning maybe around you, but then you start creating a flywheel of leverage that is worth it. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. The, the hyper growth blueprint actually was what helped us grow this channel. My personal channel, um, I was chewing on it for so long that what you just said to me about like, you know, slowing down and really understanding who you are and what you do. What I found was an hour before we did this interview, I was prepping for it. And in my brain is where that line of, well, I'm kind of like Ryan Surhan, Peter McKinnon put together storytelling, doing real estate that actually gave me clarity for my personal channel. So you, you killed two birds with one stone. And I think I'm going to spend 2024 being a lot more intentional about the videos that I'm putting out there. 
I love that, Justin. Uh, Angelique asked you a question. Do you notice a difference in the types of leads that come from your YouTube channel versus other socials? Absolutely. So, and it's funny because we do listing videos and what Sean said earlier to the previous guest is absolutely true. Those are not the ones that go the most viral, but other sellers will call you because it shows how you're going to sell their home. So I got a lead off YouTube and it was a $1.8 million listing and she was sold. Like I had the listing the day I walked in for the appointment because they had watched like six hours of my content. And I actually have another house that they're building that's like 3.5 that I'll get by proxy. So the YouTube leads I get, the quality, I would take one YouTube lead over 50 to 100 other online leads any day of the week. It's amazing. When did you first post any kind of videos? 2014. So you've been doing it a long time. So what would you encourage people as far as their mindset, if they're scared to get on camera, if they're awkward at first, and just the process of turning into the creator you are now? I would say you just got to press record. You say it all the time, right? I think my early videos, I didn't really put that much effort into my channel, but I, I was still somewhat consistent um, when I got serious about it in 2021. And I just started pressing record and I stopped worrying about the vanity metrics. You told me this actually in Clubhouse, um, subscriber count and views. And I just focused on click-through rate and retention. I was so, suddenly wasn't attached to the outcome. So if every video didn't go viral, it didn't really matter. I think it's consistent action over time helps you refine who you're speaking to and who you are. Um, and then creating the videos becomes a lot easier. So just press record. How hard is the market where you're at right now? It's it's super tough, but we're busier than we've ever been. Because again, like I'm not the smartest, the strongest. I, I don't have the most talent. I did, wasn't given the keys to the kingdom by a family that had a real estate business. But we are unreasonably consistent for an unreasonably long enough time that we can't fail. So we're actually killing it, um, even though the market's really, really hard up here right now. So would you agree that embracing YouTube and social and online branding, overall personal branding, that there, it's not hype to say you can build a recession-proof personal brand? Yeah, absolutely. So I think of pillar of content. So YouTube has become my pillar. Once I shoot the content, that becomes my newsletter. It becomes my Twitter thread. It becomes my reels that I shoot on Instagram. So like, yeah, it, YouTube as the pillar, I think, even if YouTube went away tomorrow, the skill set that you get being good at YouTube is going to translate to every other aspect of your business. Justin, any final question for me? So grateful no, to hang no, out. No, I appreciate you actually. I know everybody's, you know, always got focus on their business. Um, I think what you've done for the community, you taking that time early on on Clubhouse to pull me up on stage and pour into me. Um, the trickle and the butterfly effect is real. We have a lot of friends in close proximity. You mentioned some that are one step away from as well, too. And I think I would encourage anybody if anything, to go buy Sean's book, give him some flowers, share out his next live stream. Like instead of you doing something for me, I want everybody watching this to do something for you and think media, because I think you have really helped a lot of people and your servant leadership is probably what I admire the most about you. So. Well, I appreciate your kind words, Justin and uh, Drea collected some information on the back end. I love that your core value is do nothing out of selfish conceit or vain humility, but rather value others above yourself. I believe that's in Philippians. It is. Yeah. Founding principle of our brokerage. And we live in a world that doesn't make that easy sometimes, but if you stay focused, you'll find the opportunities. Justin, you're a legend, man. I appreciate you coming on. And uh, I know you're already crushing it, but I'm excited to watch you guys continue to rise in 2024. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate you, brother. Cheers. All right, y'all smash like, do you have an aha moment? I have a question to answer for you, but we do ahas. And you know, the aha is like helping us socialize our learning, it helps us process what have we been learning? What have we been hearing? And what's an aha moment even better if it's like an action item? I, I, I just, I'm gonna just press record. That's a good aha. I'm going to stop overthinking my next video and I'm going to shoot and upload my next video. Uh, maybe it's an aha of doing some research, maybe being more specific in some of your local videos or anything like that, local search terms. Um, and so let me know one of your aha moments and let's hit this question, home rapid repair. In my videos with affiliate links, I fall into more of a salesman fake type mode as opposed to the videos with a link, I feel more authentic. Can you give advice? Well, let me encourage you, number one, um, your self-awareness is powerful. 
So w one of two things could be happening in your videos with affiliate links, you could be turning into more of a salesman, but not even know it. And it could be turning people off or, or maybe it doesn't turn people off, but like just your self-awareness of like, wow, um, I think it shows you've made a lot more progress maybe than you realize, if that makes sense. Self-awareness is a superpower and it's very rare. Anybody have a family member who comes who might come over for Christmas or Hanukkah or the holidays and they're not very self-aware? Yeah, self-awareness is a superpower. And sometimes when we have self-awareness, we're not making an excuse for an issue we want to improve or, or a weakness we want to improve. But it does go a long way if somebody could say, yeah, I, I, something I get, something I'm working on. So I just want to encourage you like acknowledging and identifying the problem is the first op is the first step to solving the problem. So my advice, I guess, would just be, okay, how can I work on my money mindset? How can I work on being authentic? Like, how can I just, how can I, maybe am I, is there something, is there, is there a false belief I have about affiliate marketing? Am I moving into a more sales mode because I don't fully believe in the thing I'm recommending? Then maybe you step back from recommending that thing. My, I want to close the gap personally to say, okay, I am pumped about recommending the Sony FX 30. Like I don't need, I, and and uh, so I, I think the self-awareness is the superpower. I think just trying to shift your messaging and then maybe to stop overthinking it. Like, um, and this is what I mean. You're going to have imposter syndrome. We've probably never really talked about this. Like the nature of creating YouTube content is an emotional, an emotional roller coaster that can lead you down a lot of paths. And I think this is what we need to remember. Just because you think the thought doesn't mean it's true or doesn't mean you have to believe it or or just because you think the thought is now awareness to steer a different direction. Here's what I mean. The sheer nature of creating content and talking on camera is so weird. You might start having things like, I watched that back. I'm so fake. You know what I mean? Like, man, I'm just so fake. Um, or I watched that back. Is that is that what I sound like? Why do I do that with my hands when I get on camera? That's like, it's not even me. You might get haters or trolls that say something and it actually, you're just trying, like you're just out there in the ring. There's like that quote, like the one on the, the critic is not the one who counts. It's never the critic that counts. It's the person that's in the ring and getting in the ring. You're going to have self-doubt, imposter syndrome. Why'd I do that? You watch it back and you'd be like, that felt salesy. So I've watched something back and I'll be like, man, that kind of felt salesy or you know what? Like the way I worded that was kind of wrong. I don't want to stretch the truth. I kind of stretched the truth there. But I think we can over catastrophize if you have good intent and you're watching it back and always trying to improve. And what am I trying to improve? Authenticity, vulnerability, love, integrity. That's what I'm shooting for. Here's what I can guarantee you at Think Media. I make a lot of mistakes. I've made a lot of mistakes. Sean, is, do you have a perfect track record of always just being perfectly honest in every video about every brand and everything you've done? No. And anybody who says they do is the bigger person to worry about because I guarantee they have, like we all are working out, you know, our messaging working out. So I think if you have uh, good intent and self-awareness, um, and then you're just intentional about how you want to come across. And this is why we continue to invest in coaching and continue to maybe become more, more centered and speak out of an authentic place. I'll, I'll land the plane here. Um, this has been a long answer, but it's really got me inspired. You know, you fall into salesman fake type mode as opposed to other things. Like I look back at my old videos and the old Sean was, so what is the best microphone to film it? And like, just, it wasn't that it was a salesman, but there was like this different character. This was like the not a little more chill, a little more West coast. Sean, it was, it was like, a little more caffeinated, 10 years younger, Sean, whatever. Um, and I look back and, and I sometimes maybe have gone from just being who I thought I should be, just cranking up the energy, maybe a little too far. Early on in my career, one of the reasons why I like shouted 
because technology 10 years ago was so bad at church. When I was doing the church videos, we only had the on-camera mic and we'd have somebody like way back here filming. So I'd be like, so what is up guys? Because I started learning that the only way to hear it was how far away the mic was. And then I started to learn that this mic is a different experience. If you're going to work on this mic, you can come in and we can get close. I can welcome you to the coffee with candle romance hour where we get hot and heavy quickly with YouTube advice. So learning your mind. So what's the point? I look back and I'm like, dude, that guy was like a character. What a fake. No, I was trying. I'm learning. I was giving it my best shot. And then I watched my game tape and just like you did, I watched it back and I still try to grow. And I continue to invest in myself. Remember at the beginning, we, we need to learn new skills and we need to date Sam sales and marketing and we need to stay positive. Just keep going. We're getting 1% better. So then it's like, I, you know, start getting more into, and, and I get feedback. And there's been times when I've been sitting and recording, it's a blessing to have somebody else in the room, like Melissa or Kyle. I've been sitting down, I've been recording a video and I'll do a version and Kyle will be like, yeah, that was, that was all right. I mean, it seemed kind of fake. <laughs> Thanks, bro. But like, because I'm just, you're just trying like, and, and I know my intent is good, but communication, we could inflect up, down, we could be overly, you know? And so I sometimes think we go a little too insular and we just get stuck in our own head and we're like, oh man, gee, I'm so terrible. And we just get so, we get super negative and, or like over, we just overthink things. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's a little bit of the obsessive compulsive uh, kind of ness of my personality. Um, but let me encourage you and encourage everybody watching. And I hope this rant has kind of been valuable. Like it's never the critic that counts. And might I challenge you, that could also go for your inner critic. I think the credit belongs to the courageous. And who are the courageous? Those that are not cowering in fear. Those whose lives are not marked by how much attention to detail they pay to other people's lives. I am not impressed by somebody who's built their brand or built their world or is addicted to drama and they're just known for how much attention to detail they pay to other people's lives. It's never the critic that counts. It's the person that's in the ring, the person that's pressing record, the person that's getting on camera. And if somebody's like, you post your first couple of videos and they go, you're fake. You come off weird. You talk weird. Well, we all do because we're just getting on camera for the first time. But the critic who's pointing that out, what are you? They're sitting in their mom's basement making no videos, trying to build their brand off of tearing others down. Empathetically are probably emotionally wounded and insecure and they've given up on their dreams. So now they're trying to tear down everybody who hasn't like, so that person, which I know those comments can be real. And this is a good conversation for real estate agents and people who are just wanting to get on camera. Cause maybe one of the biggest hurdles you're going to have to come over is just the mindset. What if I don't look professional? What if I hurt my brand? What if I seem salesy talking to a camera? Is so weird. It's so awkward. You're in the ring. Let me give you credit. If you're, you're in the ring, if you pressed record and the video was terrible, you deserve the credit because 99% of people won't. They're going to stay in fear. They're going to hesitate. They're going to overthink. And they're probably going to critique people. They're going to find somebody's blowing up on social. Then the critics come out of the woodwork. That's why I say I see you in the comments, but I never see you at the bank. Comment section is a cool place to be. Thank you for leaving comments. But you know what's better than leaving a comment is creating a video. Create something. Press record. Go do it. Go hustle. Go put in the work. My friends, this has been the Coffee with Cannell show. We have one other question that took me down a little uh, rabbit hole. But um, I hope that y'all are feeling grateful today. I'm going to hit this last question rapid fire so we can end at the top of the hour shooting a Think Media podcast episode with my friend John Acuff a little bit late, later. All it takes is a goal. Let's get our goals right for 2024. What's one of your goals for 2024? And we'll end the, land the plane with this question right here. How do you find time to create content where you're actively working on your business? Shoot, Kyle. 
36 minute answer incoming. Just kidding, but kind of could could take it there. So uh, book recommendation, and we'll link it up in the show notes, is a book called Buy Back Your Time by Dan Martell. Think Media Podcast episode recommendation is my interview with Dan Martell about Buy Back Your Time. That'll be a really good accelerator. And so that's kind of one answer is you've got to, number one, do a time audit. How much time do you have? Number two, do a, you know, priorities audit. What are your actual priorities? You know, what are the essential tasks you have to do every week? Number three, identify opportunities to what could I stop doing? This is unnecessary. This isn't fruitful or between creating content on YouTube or doing this activity over there, you got to weigh them. YouTube is more valuable. If at this exact moment, you know that if you make 10 cold calls, you know, an hour, I don't know, 25 cold calls an hour, that actually two of those want to follow up. And that leads like, there might be a, a lever in your business that you don't want to let go of because it's so clearly mathematically tracks towards a business result. Okay, well, then that one actually needs to stay up here. But then there's this thing over here where you're like, rearranging modules on your website or something like rearranging chairs on the Titanic, like the ship's going down, you need to actually take energy away from this and focus it on Sam sales and marketing. So you actually can revive the, the, the crash that's coming in your own personal business. So it's assessing priorities, time management, all these things. If you're an individual and resources are scarce, solo creator, you got to do it that way. And then whatever time you find, you invest that time creating content and you got to wear the two hats. That's what most people will have to do in business in the bootstrapping phase of being the chief operating officer of your business, being the chief executive officer of your business and being the chief marketing officer. Sean, that's three roles. Yeah. And you got to wear all three hats. You got to run ops, run the vision, run the technical ops and the details and run the marketing. Okay. But then my next question, fluid levels, is do you, you know, do you have money? Um, you know, we just talked to Justin. He said he's got a creative director, he's got a videographer. And you don't go zero to a hundred real quick like Drake. You might just go to a contractor you work with once a month. In Vegas, if you want to fly out to Vegas, you could hook up with Omar El Takori, who's doing two, four long forms and 20 verticals for you, you know, and you come in and you batch so you pay for a batch of videos, super smart, or do that yourself, but that's leveraged. So what did you just do? You put on your calendar, a shoot day. You could do that also by yourself. You put on your calendar, a shoot day where you hire a local videographer or whatever, and they come to your office and they set up and you just batch as much content as you can in one day. It's a leveraged activity. So I think it's about looking at leverage. I think it's about looking at your auditing your schedule. And then I would say definitely check out the buy back your time episode. Uh, with Dan Martell and check out the book. Um, and uh, that will serve you. As we land the plane today, I know we've been sharing some of our uh, our uh, takeaways, sales and Sam, sales and marketing. We're out here, capture, nurture, convert. Yes, great. Buy back your time book. Uh, Drea dropped it in the Think Media podcast chat too. That's a really good one to uh, read going into 2024. Do you have any books on your reading list for 2024? Let me know. And um, lastly, um, if you haven't watched realtubeclass.com, that is your next step. Uh, we got to land the plane on Coffee with Candle for today. Closing time. I'm not sure why I'm singing this song, but I love it. So we just had our Think Media party in Vegas with uh, our team retreat. And um, we had a bus where we went to Vegas, went to a steakhouse and everything. And I didn't know that Nolan, Mark, Trey, and Sam on the Thick Media team were like all-time dancers. There was literally a dance battle on the bus at our all-team retreat. You can actually see clips on my Instagram, at Sean Cannell. Um, what's the point of saying that? Uh, oh yeah. At the end of the night though, cause I was the DJ. So I had the Bluetooth on, had to play that closing time song. And so anyways, y'all know the song, but 
we got to close. And so the next move is to go to realtubeclass.com. You can check out our free YouTube strategy class for real estate agents. So fun. Definitely a different content than we normally share. And really a no brainer if you are a real estate professional of any kind or a service provider, you're in mortgage. So head to realtubeclass.com. My name is Sean Cannell, rhymes with YouTube channel. Thanks so much for checking out this episode of Coffee with Cannell today. And I can't wait to connect with you in a future episode. Peace.